Hi there fellow Element owners. Uh, we wanted to show you our sleeping setup. Uh, we got a lot of our ideas off of films that other people put up on the net so we wanted to make a video showing what worked for us and hopefully some of these ideas can be helpful to you as well. So before we begin um, I'll just say that we have a 2007 Element SC but the basic idea should work for just about any element that's out there. Also I should mention that I am short. I am five foot seven. My wife is five foot two, and this fits us just right. But if you're a little bit taller, you might have to come up with a different solution to get a little more length. Um, as I said before, we built our platform on a lot of the ideas that we saw from other people, but we incorporated some features that we felt were missing that were important to us. So the first big difference is that this setup isn't permanent. We can install it or take it out in about five minutes and there were almost no modifications made to the car. So when we're done camping, we can restore this car to its stock condition and still use it as a traditional car. Secondly, the bed is set up all the time. Um, and as you can see, all of our gear is stored underneath and can be accessed without having to lift the bed or make any changes to your sleeping arrangement. We felt this was important because when you pull into a campsite late at night, the last thing that you want to do is fiddle with setting up a bed. You just want to go to sleep. Third feature, worst case scenario, you get a flat tire in the rain. We wanted to make sure that you could access the spare without having to remove the entire bed system. Uh, the mattress simply folds up and only this back portion of the bedding actually gets lifted and only a few items that you've stored underneath need to be removed from the car in order to access the spare tire. So, without further ado, let me introduce you to our hotelament. So the exact width and dimensions of your bed is going to be set up a little bit based on what kind of gear that you've got. So for example, the depth in this back storage container was somewhat determined by what would fit a pair of lawn chairs. I had to make sure that was going all the way. And also the width here was based on one of the coolers that we had that we really like to use. So we made sure that it fits just right. So just have a look at your camping gear before you decide your exact measurements and make sure that your stuff will fit before you start making cuts. Here are all the individual pieces that make up a sleeping setup. Wherever the sleeper made contact, the interior trim of the car, we have attached a strip of carpet for contact cement. This prevents the wood from marking up the trim and keeps the bed assembly quiet as you drive. After several hundred kilometers of driving on gravel roads, this rig doesn't make a sound. So this is the backbone of the whole fixture. And the way I've designed it is it sits just in front of your storage hooks here. That's important because that will come into play later. And the hook system here, just bring it together, push it down, and that locks these two pieces together. All right, these are the two back braces that I made. Um, you'll see it's tapered in. That's actually because your tailgate is leans in towards the car. And again, have the same connecting pieces. So we'll just go ahead and attach them to the front here. And you can see, enclosed with lots of room to spare. So this is the front piece of the bed and what keeps all of your vertical membranes kind of in line and fitting together tightly are these little channels that I've made. They're just uh, pine glued on and the two by or the uh, three quarter ply slots right in there and it keeps everything aligned perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in. So here's the luggage. 
hook. Now we'll just take our bungee strap. And that's what will keep the bed tight against the frame and keep it from flying around when you go over bumps. So this is the back piece of the bed. Again, we've got the channels that keep our braces in alignment. This one's a little bit different. Just because of the shape of it, I couldn't actually fit it in there. So I've hinged it so that it will actually fit through the opening of the back of the door there. And that hinge is right on top of one of the braces. I've also got these little blocks here. Those rest on the frames for the seat. So that gives you some stability right out at the end, and as well as resting on the front or the center cross member there. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is what the channels look like and you want them pretty tight there's not much room there and you just kind of chamfer the edges of your vertical bracers and that's what kind of keeps it together but the tighter it is the better and that way you don't get any rattling the final thing here in the corner you can see it's a little bit wobbly we decided to go with a pipe in the corner to give it some final stability just because it takes up a little the least amount of room so how this works is cut a small hole in the trim here that I fill with a rubber plug. Plug. That's because I don't want to rest directly on the trim. I want it to be on the body, which is underneath down there. So how that works is you just put this pipe in there. You come up under here. I've routed a small little recess that the pipe sits into. Once that's in place, simply pull your bungee down, clip it to your storage hook, and that is that. So the stability comes, you've got the one cross member that goes all the way through here, and these overlap. And the reason why I had the little block is on this one corner, that's what just hits against the frame of the seat and keeps it rigid as well as the stability from the two pipes that go in the, in the edge there. So when you roll in to camp, you'll notice these pieces here. These just extend your legroom just that much more and allows, well, people of my height anyway, to completely stretch out on this thing. So I'll show you how they work. Pull the seat forward and lean the backrest up as far as it'll go. got the little clips that come down and as you bring this down you just release it from the hook make it flat and then that rests on the carpet and that gives you a very stable platform so a shameless plug for IKEA here this is the Malforce which fits the element exactly it's 53 inches wide, which is exactly the space that's inside your car. And the other beauty of it, it's got the zipper all the way around it, so you can take the cover off, wash it really easily, which I'm obviously going to have to do. The only other modification that we made to the mattress was we cut 5 inches out at the center here, or at the end here, and then just sewed the cover together, which makes this foldable portion. So when you kick the leg plates up, this folds with it. So let's go ahead and put it in the car. Like a glove. So the match is fully installed. It's resting on the kick plates and right across your armrest, right there. 
So that just gives you that extra foot of leg space, plenty of room to stretch out. So when you're ready to drive, all you do is fold your mattress, which is easy now because we've cut that little piece out. Take your foot piece, click that in place so it doesn't rattle and drive you crazy on your drive. Clip your webbing together, tighten it up, and now you've got lots of room to move your seat back and forth. So that's, that's the setup, a nice little space where you can get yourself kind of set up for going to bed. I can stretch out pretty comfortably right here.